Today on Wood Turning, we're going to make a floating table. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools, best in class carbide wood turning tools. So the other day I was Facebooking and ran across this really cool video of a floating project. And it was just like two U's and it just did this weird thing. And I went, what the heck is that? And it's actually called a tensegrity structure. So what it means is like in this case, these are chains and it looks like it's floating. But the reason it works is because the weight of this is coming back. That chain's holding the weight. These are keeping it from flipping over. Really cool idea. And I mean, it actually holds stuff. I'll be a little bit careful here because I dropped it a minute ago and broke it. And I had to glue it back together. But look at that. <laughs> it's, just, it's just too cool. So I did a little research and tried to find some chains that would look right. My sister works at Joann's, which is probably going to be closed by the time uh, you guys uh, see this video. Uh, if you need to hire a good worker, my sister's available, by, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, I'm trying to describe this to her. She goes, oh, I know what that is. And then she said, why don't you go to Michael's to get some chains in the jewelry section. Okay. I go over there and I talk to a young lady. Oh, I know what that is. So I must be way out of the loop on something really cool. But hey, better late than never. So we're going to make this today and we're going to use Purple Heart for all the pieces. I've got two blanks prepared. I put a circle on one. So it's about a five inch board, five and a quarter inch board. I just want to get the biggest circle out of the wood that I can. And I've taken double sided masking tape here and put it on this piece. And now I'm going to position this on here. And the reason I'm doing this is I want symmetry on these. We're not only going to cut this on here together. Got clearance? Yeah. We're also going to turn them together. So we'll get this circle cut out and then we go to the lathe. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors, Robust Lays and Easywood Tools, because without their support, we wouldn't be here making videos and that'd be no fun. Trust me, my wife would have me in the house way too often. She'd be trying to kick me out. Get out there. Anyway, so what I have here is called a waste block. It's just a piece of wood that's got a tenon on it that's held by the chuck. I've put more double-sided tape on here. I made sure that I marked the center of my blank so I wouldn't lose it, right? So I'm going to come down here and this is my robust live center and I've got a little tiny indentation. So now I've got it, oops, it <laughs> slipped off. I'm going to get it back on right there. There's a little tiny hole there from the compass. So I'm going to advance this in. I guess I could have just slid the whole thing in a little bit. There we go. I'll lock it down. Okay. Now I lost the hole again. This is always thought I could have made the hole bigger, but I don't want to because if I make the hole too big, it's going to be in the top of my piece. So this is the top piece up there. So, okay, now we're touching, right? Now, barely on there, I'm gonna back it off and I've got this little thingy right here. So if you see, there is a screw right here, an Allen, or a hex screw. So now, see the tip? It's disappearing, I'm pushing it in with my finger. So I'm just gonna tighten that down. Now I'm gonna screw this in here and use pressure to push on here to get that double-sided tape to adhere to that wood. So this way I'm not putting a hole in the middle of it and it's pushing it in and making it a nice tight hole. So the first thing we want to do is we want to just clean up the edge here and make it nice and smooth. This is a uh, end grain and it is purple heart, which is super tough. So if you don't get a clean cut on this, <laughs> you're going to never sand out the tear out. So I'm going to pick the speed up. I still have this tailstock up here for support. And we're going to just come across and just gently level out this surface. Take your time. The slower you go, the cleaner the cut will be. Because, you, like I said, you cannot sand this in grain. It is tough. So we're just letting the tool feed. I'm leaning my weight to the left. And I'm rubbing the bevel. That was the transition right there between the two pieces of wood. It went quickly because it hit the masking tape. Here I go. 
and I can push on that. I don't mind if it tears out on the edge there because we're going to round that out. So let's take a quick peek and see how it's going. Ooh, that's nice and clean. You can see this is the area where it would tear out, where it's shiny, that's the side grain. Here where it gets dull is the end grain. No, it's backwards. Where it gets shiny is the end grain. But anyway, so we just want it to be as clean as possible. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit more, make it just nice and perfect, and then we're going to start working on this side. Now before we get to this side, I do want to round the edges. Since I have end grain coming at me, I don't want to push that way. I can, it won't be the cleanest cut, but right now I have access to here so I can do a pull cut on this edge. I'm just wanting to round the edge. Just take a little bit of the sharp off. And by doing a pull cut, you can see I've got the tool angled like this, the handle's down, and I'm using the sweeping back side of the bowl gouge to make this. Now, I can come over here and do the same thing on this side. And you could do this later sanding it, but it'd just take a long time, so do it now while you got the chance. Now here's the tricky one. See the white line? That's the intersection. So I'm going to come in here and start making a bead. Now I could do this with a spindle gouge. I've got the bowl gouge in my hand, so I'm going to go ahead and try it with this one. So I'm rolling, I'm lifting the handle, I'm letting the tool feed, and now I'm almost at a stop point with the way I've got this position. So that rounded that edge nicely. <laughs> one out of two. So we'll just round this one off. And you can see the white line from the tape. So we want to make that our intersection. That's looking pretty good. So we're ready to work on this side, or this end, or this top. So this is the top of the top. <laughs> And you can see I don't have a hole in there. I just have a little mark with the pencil. What I want to do on this is dish, dish it out. If you look over there at the one I've done, it's dished out on top because if you want to set something up there, you have a little edge that looks nice, a little rim. Um, I don't want to do too much of a design on the top because I think that'd take away from the effect. So as I start my cut here, I've got a carbide cutter and I'm just going in and pushing in. And I'm probably going to go in I don't know, eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch. And I'm just going to work my way back to the edge here. Because I want to make this part flat and I want to have a rim here. Because if you set something on it, you do need a flat surface. And I love using a carbide on Purple Heart because it does a wonderful job of moving the wood and leaving a nice surface. Round that off a little bit. So once I have this done, we're going to sand these two pieces on the lathe and then we'll be separating it to start working on the bottom. So it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Two pieces of wood stuck together on another piece of wood, all sanded, ready to go, except how do you get them off? <laughs> well, we use my handy dandy little friend, the putty knife. And whatever company decides to put stickers on a putty knife that you can't peel off, Quinn, I gotta talk to you guys. <laughs> but anyway, so I want to support this with my hand while I push down in here. And it just takes a little bit of fidgeting. And the nice thing about this is since this is a blunt, instrument. I'm not going to cut myself if things fall up, come apart real quickly and this dives through there. But I just have to make sure that this doesn't shift while I'm doing it. And also, don't overdo <laughs> the double-sided tape <laughs> or it'll stick on there like crazy. Okay, got a little bit working here. So, there we go. Now we got it. Now we're getting there. There we go. Cool. Okay, got it off. You can see it leaves some residue. So we're going to probably just gently sand this on a sanding disc to clean that up. And then on this end, we're going to clean it up and then make a little bit of decoration on there, which is just for prettiness, but also it's going to help us establish where that we want to put, where that we want to put, where we're going to put the hooks at the base that holds everything together. 
So we're all sanded up here, and I want to turn the lathe on. I don't need a lot of speed. I just want to find the center here. There we go. I can always sand off the pencil mark. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to take my Sweet 7, which is the zeroed center ruler I made. I'm going to hold it up here, and I want to come and get a measurable mark. So what I mean by that is, here's my edge. So from here to here, it's a half inch. So I'm going to make a mark right there. And now I'm going to split the difference. So this is one inch right here. So I've got that. And then I'm going to cut that in half to give it a little more style. Different than what I did on the other one. So we're going to go from one inch to a half inch. So now we've got kind of this neat little stagger, right? But the importance of this line is that this is going to tell me where I'm drilling the holes for the hooks that hold it together and it will allow me then to measure it out on the other piece. And that could be a booger if you do it wrong because the balance gets off. So let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to come in and I'm going to use a carbide and just push in gently. I'm going to pick the speed up a bit and go a little faster. Come in here. And then we're going to come out here. There we go. So now we're going to be doing some woodworking. <laughs> Can't believe I said that. <laughs> so I've doubled up the wood like I did before. I've drawn a shape on here. And this is the outermost. This lines up with the outside of my top piece, right? Or the bottom piece, too. As I come down here, the important thing on whatever shape this is, there's my center line. So make sure this goes a little bit further than the center line. So when you put your attachment here, it's dead center on the tops and the bottoms. That helps out a lot. Like I said, you can make this any shape you want. I'm going for this coat hook look. <laughs> um, and since it's doubled up, they're going to be identical. <laughs> and that's the whole idea. Now my blade might not make this curve, so I might have to do it a couple tries, but we'll cut this out and then we'll do a little bit of cleanup on it. Okay, so I've been doing uh, drilling and some screwing and all that stuff and everything else. So I made my first two holes to drill in here. And you need to kind of have them wide but not too narrow because they're too narrow kind of disrupts, disrupts how this holds together. Then I took my calipers and come from this end and I measured that diameter right there. And remember when I said I wanted to make this a measurable mark? So when I came over here to do these two screws, I put these in position, then I measured out a half inch because that was the distance from the side to where the holes are. So then I made marks, I was able to drill these. So this and this are identical, but in real life it's going to be like this with that below it. No, in real life it's going to be like this. This still confuses the crap out of me doing this like that. So now I've got my little post here, they're going to hold everything up, right? So to position them, I need to find the dead center. And one trick I did when I did this part, I curved it. So if it was perfectly straight, you would feel obligated to have it right on the edge. But with it curved, you can come in and it looks aesthetic still. But the critical part of this is, is this needs to have it be positioned to where it's dead center. So I'm using this like a... Um, Oh, you know what they're, uh, 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 pl plumbers and plumbers bob. Yeah, that's it. So I'm letting the chain hang down there to find my center. And then what I'll do is I'll put a little glue on here and then put it back where it is and get it glued in place. And then on this piece, you have to think in terms, it's going to be like this. 
and this has to be opposite so we're going to go on this side and hang it and do the same thing. I still have a tiny mark there so I know where my center is on that one. Once we have that, then we're going to start messing with the chain and I'll explain more about it then. So what I have here is when I asked my sister who works at Joann's um, what I could use for small chain. I wanted something delicate. She said you want jewelry chain. So Michael's was closer than her. <laughs> and they're closing her store anyway. So, uh, so I bought the jewelry chain. It's really cool. Doesn't hold a lot. So it won't support big things, but it works great for this. So I'm just going to cut the <laughs> chains to the right length and put them in here. And so this chain will go here like so. So now I need to cut the two chains here to go up there. By the way, if you notice down here, you see a little bit of glue, you just hand sand that away. And then when you put a polyurethane on here, it'll blend in perfectly and won't be a problem. So I've been playing with my chain a little bit here. I have a little left over here. I tried to measure it off the other one over there, but it doesn't relate real well. And I wound up with it tipping to the back. Well, this is why I'm using chain. If you use string, trying to get it to the exact length is almost impossible. How are you going to attach it and everything else? So what I've done with this chain is to make it shorter, I've twisted it. And by twisting it, it shortens the chain and now you're in balance. <laughs> so that is really cool. Look at that. All right, not bad. So that's how you make a Tignegarity structure. I can't even say the word anymore. I like floating table. That works for me. So that's it. That's how you make a floating table. I think it's a really, really cool project. <laughs> Until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools, best in class carbide wood turning tools.